Hey guys, this is Chris, and today we're just going to do uh, a video on the Femi X8 SE. Um, and this is something I like to try to do with most quads, is to just make sure people understand there are some things you should do other than just charge that battery, download the app, pair everything, and take off for flight. Um, this thing is fairly easy to do all these things, charge the battery, pair everything, download the app, um, and take right to the sky. And often you see somebody instantly out there doing, just putting it into the air and doing a range test. And uh, if they're lucky enough not to experience any problems, then you find them asking questions about why it has this odd behaviors and, uh, behavior and such. So a lot of your quads require compass calibrations, IMU calibrations, things like that. It's just a preventative maintenance. It's a fine tuning. It resets uh, values um, to let the quad know that it's nice and flat and level. Uh, so you're not flying cocked or doing a crab walk when you're trying to go straight, uh, things like that. So it's very important that you do these type of things before you take to the air. First and foremost, like I've said in my last video, you have this quick start guide. Uh, I'm going to put a link to the actual manual so you can just click that link and instantly get the manual without navigating into the FEMI group or anything like that. Uh, I recommend that you go and click that link and uh, download that manual and uh, read it, understand it, go through all the things and you're going to find that, oh, well, it has this or that that I didn't know about. So um, I highly recommend that you do that. So first off, let's just talk about the SD card. Put, you want to put your SD card in and in my case it's a six, uh, 64 gig uh, uh, I'm trying to do this without getting in the way. Let me hold that. I like this rubber cover but it also gets on my nerves. Um, let me pull my card out. This is one thing I don't like is this is all recessed and I cannot grab that card. I don't have fingernails. I don't like to have long fingernails because I'm a mechanic and a technician and my fingernails get real dirty if I have them long so I, I can't grab this right now. I have to use tweezers. <laughs> so what we have here, the card I'm using, it's a SanDisk Extreme 64 gig uh, version 30. It's a class three. So it's very easy to put in, but for me, it's not easy to take out with it being recessed like that. I don't like it, but it's not a deal breaker for me either. And I've got this set to RC. Um, I'm not seeing a difference between, I'm not seeing anything happen on my screen or anything like that uh, going from RC to Wi-Fi and um, I'm not sure if that's just something that's not interactive right yet, not working exactly, but I'm not seeing anything with that. So I have it on RC, I have my SD card in there. Um, I've kind of read my manual. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I've read it, but maybe not retained everything. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and turn on the quad, turn on the controller, and you know, open up our app. So let's turn on the quad by pressing twice, short, a short click, and then a long click. One, two, and hold. And that's one thing that I don't like either. It sounds like I'm starting up a Mario Brothers video game when I turn that thing on. Um, no big deal, but I fly quads in the house and my dog hates them. And as soon as she hears these beeps and stuff like that, she goes nuts. Um, and runs and usually hides under the couch. So I wish that was something we could do is mute the noise some of these quads make. But onto the controller. Same thing, press once, press twice and hold. 
and then it's going to pair with the quad we're going to open up our app and go into my apps open the Femi Navi app and right here it's telling me that there is a firmware update I'm going to do that in another video following this so we're going to enter it enter the device now when you get yours and it says update the app or um, update the firmware um, I don't recommend you just jump right into that and doing it because it tells you there's an update. Um, I recommend you do your homework because as we all know, there's firmware updates out there that are bad and um, do your homework. Join a Facebook group, um, go into RC forums, somewhere where there's good discussion on the uh, firmware on this and see what people are saying. If they're reporting that it's gone down, uh, or took a back step with that update, then you're going to want to stay away from that update. I have read a few negatives on this firmware update, but I'm still going to do it for video purposes. So um, let's just get right into it. And we're going to go into settings. We're going to click the gear icon here. And there are lots of things. I'm going to do another video where we just kind of go through all the settings. Um, a lot of these aren't things we really need to necessarily worry about for your first flight. Um, a lot of the default settings are perfectly fine. Um, there is a beginner mode. It limits the speed and distance of height. So if you're fairly new to quads in general and uh, want to really play it safe, I highly recommend you do that. Do not just go right into sport mode because that's everything is maxed out on that. So you want to kind of avoid that and let's see what else we have precise landing okay so here we have our um, compass calibration in our IMU uh, it says IMU check but notice right here it says the amount of magnetic interference I like that too if this is accurate that's nice I like that so compass calibration you definitely want to go ahead and do your compass calibration and you want to watch this that's why I like this you want to watch this magnetic interference I'm low um, I don't have it in a perfect situation because I have a computer on one end I have my um, microphone on one end so it, it's not necessarily the perfect situation for it okay so since I am near the computer and um, microphone and camera and all that I'm going to do the calibration it says my inter my uh, interference is low I'm gonna do the calibration but I'm gonna pull away from the camera so once I do the calibration all it is is you're gonna follow what the screen says and you're gonna rotate the quad uh, horizontal like this and then you're gonna turn it nose down so you can see here you're going to hold it nose down and then you're going to turn it to calibrate it as well. Uh, if you own a Hubson, it's the same type of procedure. So as you see, my interference just spiked up when I came close to the camera. So I'm going to get into that and I'm going to stay away from all this electronic and pull it away out of the camera. Click start. So there it's telling me turn it counterclockwise. So let's pull away hopefully all of my interference doesn't mess it up because I want to get through this in the video and be done with that okay that was fairly quick now I've got it nosed down and it says to turn it the other direction it looks like no okay it does not matter what direction you turn it I think I turned one clockwise, one counterclockwise, and as you see, it passed. So that's good. Do that compass calibration. I highly recommend you do it outside where you're going to fly and uh, do it away from any magnetic interference, uh, heavy metallic objects like your watches, your cell phones, all that kind of thing. Uh, limit your 
your uh, electronics and your magnetic interference. So do that one outside where you're going to be flying. And then we're going to go to the IMU. It says check. We're going to touch that. And here it says check IMU. Please keep the drone at a stable place in check. So this is where you want to do it at home, on the table, on a flat level surface. And it seems to do it very quick, usually on all, all my other quads. So let's see what it does here. The wheel's turning. It's checking IMU. Do not move the drone, it says. And it says IMU is normal. So those are two very important things you want to do. Do this one at home on a nice flat level surface. And then the compass calibration, do that out on the field. Amazon, go away. Do that out on the field. And um, then you want to go and just go through the app and learn certain things. You have a fail safe here. That is something important to take care of uh, prior to flying. Uh, for your fail safe, you can, you can select what you want it to do. Just hover, land, or return to home. I have mine set to return to home. So if you have any type of signal or low battery or any type, all the, whatever the fail safes are for this, mine's going to hopefully return to home. Um, then nothing real important and then we have rc calibration i'm going to click rc calibration calibrate please turn off the drone before rc calibration so let's turn that off one two hold and wait for it to prompt okay click start so now we're going to it just checked all the center points of our sticks now we're going to hit every axis full up full down full left full right and it passed. Now we're going to do the left dial all the way down. Let go. All the way up. Let go. And it's done. So the RC calibration is done. And then we have stick mode. That's something important for you to, to do as well. Basically it changes your up down throttle forward backward movement and so forth turn left turn right turn left turn right meaning turn or rotation so i fly i'm in mode one and then mode two reverses those so now your up and downs here and your forward and backward are here mode three is forward up down up down it, it switches your left and right device okay so i have it back into mode one go back into the menu and i think that's all we need to worry about for that this right here is your five directional button that's this button here you can change what it does what it controls when you click it and move it uh, gimbal calibration, so that's another one we're going to do. Let's turn a quad back on. One, two, hold. Wait for it to pair all up and everything. 
Okay, so let's turn it so you can see the gimbal, the camera. So right here, gimbal calibration. We're going to click calibrate. Click start and you'll see it calibrate. It must not have been off at all uh, because it did not move. Last time I did, did oh, there we go. <laughs> it's resetting. Okay. So it did its calibration and then it went and did a reset right there. Last time I did it, I did, or at least I think I saw it move a little bit. So if it's not off or out of calibration, um, you're probably not going to see anything at all. That's just my guess. So let's click OK. And... Then you just have your gimbal pitch speed. That's not something you, that you necessarily have to worry about before flight. That's all we're doing is going over the things that are very important before you go out and fly. Here's one that's good is your battery. It tells you each cell. I like this a lot. So right now I've got 4.14, 4.16, 4.15. Um, that's not bad. They're not off by very much of a, of a um, value at all. So that's good. 85% uh, remaining total capacity tells you what you have um, and then cycles and then temperature it gives you the battery temperature that's another thing I like plus I really like that the quad has a fan inside of it a cooling fan and over discharge times uh, no over discharge so it's got the discharge fail safe uh, to where you can't totally deplete this and discharge it and ruin the battery. And unless you select different, I guess. Doesn't give you that. Um, low battery warning. You can set the value, the percentage, when you want it to give you that low battery volume. So if you're out in a long distance and then it you have that value set low, you're not going to have enough battery to get back. So you want to get to know how far you can go and what it takes to get back when you're out at that distance, how much battery remaining that you need. So that's an important thing to know as well. Uh, return to home when battery only enough to return to home. That's selected on. Uh, land when battery only enough for land. You can tell this is Chinese translation in this app. <laughs> Um, but again, land, uh, land when battery alone, only enough. Okay. Land, <laughs> it messes me up. Land when battery alone, only enough for land. Okay. So that's selected on as well. I would, I, in my case, I'm leaving those on. I think that's probably the smart route to go. And then I have my map set for satellite. Calibration, calibrate map coordinates for China mainland. I have that turned off. The units, I like this too. You can do Imperial. Uh, here in the U.S. we use Imperial. And then in other areas, other countries, you're using the metric system. You can use metric. So I will see my readings in feet and miles per hour. I like that a lot. That is something to update. And then you can check for a firmware update. And like I said, I'm going to do that into another video following this one. And then if you've made a whole bunch of changes, don't remember what they were from the set start, you can go and reset the default program or parameters and click reset and it puts everything back um, except I think some of your camera settings. I'm not sure. Let's see what it says. Uh, all parameters except camera will be reset to default value. Please operate carefully. So yes. We're going to click cancel on that, but it will go back to all your default settings except whatever you've done to your camera. So that's it. That's really all you need to know as far as just the simple little things you should do prior to putting this sucker up into the air and um, just taking off. Uh, do these things and um, you'll be a lot more successful at taking this out and flying it um, without having any crazy issues of 
toilet bowling or flyaways or things like that. Uh, most of your problems, if you have flyaways, uh, the, you can chalk them up to interference, but you can also charge, chalk them up to uh, a bad calibration to the compass. So you want to do that compass calibration like I showed you, but do it outside with no interference. And um, your chances for success are very high if you do those calibrations and do them properly. Other thing is unable to enter GPS, please be careful. It just tells you please be, please be careful. It does not stop you from flying. So it does let you fly. Um, so that's the other thing. Be smart. Make sure you have your maximum value of satellites. You can see it changes better, changes uh, color as you get higher up in the satellites. Um, so be smart and uh, try to wait until you have the, a good allotted amount of satellites. That works as a signal. Um, technically, and your quad will um, react based on weak or high signal. So it's just like I've said in another video, just like a radio signal, if it's low, the quality is not so good. It's scratchy, uh, and if it's high, you've got a nice stereo sound. Same with the GPS. When it's low, the quad might not act as it should, and it might give you some problems if it's high. Uh, you're going to have a more stable uh, reaction between you, your your controller, and the quad. So that's it, guys. Um, like I said, there's still things I'm learning. My my phone is not uh, working perfectly with the app. There are some issues, like with the camera uh, camera settings and things. So uh, I'm kind of learning as I go here and just giving you my suggestions based on uh, what I see so far within this and also uh, just with my experience with other quads uh, with my DJI's, my 3DR Solos, um, now this Femi, my Hubsons, um, all of those ask you to do certain calibrations so those are very important and I just want to point that out to people before you go and take the flight so hopefully you found this video useful uh, Thank you very much for watching. To all you newcomers, now that I'm uh, doing this FEMI stuff on my channel, uh, please click that subscribe button. I really appreciate it, and I will continue to try to bring you things like this. Uh, my next video, like I said, is going to be doing a uh, firmware update to show you that process, uh, which I hear is very easy to do. So uh, click that subscribe button. Everybody give me that thumbs up like. I appreciate it. And uh, we'll see you in the next video. Thanks and take care.